Hi, I'm Phil Ashey from the American Anglican Council, and we're doing this video series on the Book of Common Prayer. We're on the Great Litany and Decalogue, which start on page 89 in the new 2019 Book of Common Prayer. Some people wonder, well, why do we even have these solemn prayers, uh, prayers of repentance and confession uh, in the prayer book? And, and frankly, there's a good answer to that, and that's because the people of Israel from the very beginning were called together to repent. There were times of solemn repentance and fasting. And in our liturgical year, which we'll talk about later, there are times like Lent and Advent, um, the supplication, which you'll hear about in times of great national distress and anxiety, as it says right here in the prayer book. You know, when we need to come together as a people and get on our knees and pray and repent, and beseech God's deliverance and His mercy. So let's listen in. The, the very first uh, service to come into English, to the English language from the Latin language, was the Great Litany. The Great Litany um, is a form of intercessions that prays actually just about every imaginable concern the church has. Um, it, it prays for uh, peace, it prays for the armed forces, it prays for um, deliverance from sedition and heresy, it prays for the unborn, it prays for um, all households that are broken or torn by strife, it, it prays for really every imaginable, almost imaginable subject. Um, and it's a way that all God's people can be reminded of the, the ways in which we're supposed to pray. And, and we're never to be without prayer you know, for others and for the needs of the world. So I am Bishop Quig Lawrence. I am a suffragan bishop in Diocese of Christ Our Hope. I'm also a rector of Church of the Holy Spirit Anglican, have been there for 30 years plus. I came in at the tail end. Um, honestly, uh, if you had talked to the guys in my seminary class, they'd be like, you're in the liturgical task force? Ha, ha, ha. That's funny. But I think one of the things I appreciate about um, the leadership and uh, Archbishop Bob is they want a lot of voices at the table. I think it was unifying. We worked, when Christians work together on a mission, something for the kingdom, they come together. Yeah, so a litany is a, uh, a prayer where there's kind of like supplication and a back and forth between the person that's leading it and those who, the others who are gathered present. And so we would do the Great Litany like the first Sunday of Advent, first Sunday in Lent, and other times. Um, why do that? A lot of people say, yeah, why do that? Because we have a lot to repent of. And um, I, I just remember when I came back to the Anglican world, what I really loved is seeing a bunch of people kneel down together and confess their sins and not try to cover it up. And, and so I love that in general, and I like the Great Litany in specific. And also the, the general confession, I love that as well. That we get to not hide. We don't hide the fact that we're sinners. And we don't hide the fact that we need a savior desperately. The Decalogue, uh, the 10 words, um, the, literally the, the, the 10 commandments. Um, uh, again, in, in the earliest prayer books, the normal practice at every communion service to, was to recite the Ten Commandments. Again, the, the, the reformers believed that folks really needed to be formed on these words. They really needed to know what the Ten Commandments said. Indeed, you couldn't be brought to confirmation unless you'd memorized not only the Lord's Prayer and the Apostles' Creed, but the Ten Commandments. Deca would be ten, log, word, ten words, ten commandments. Where I grew up in Virginia, um, when, when the churches were started by people from England, you know, I think uh, started around 1607, 1609, whatever. Anyway, bottom line is when you would go into these old colonial churches, you would see the creed and the Lord's Prayer on the wall. It's, it's very, uh, so the creed, the Lord's Prayer, and some of them had also the, the Ten Commandments. A lot of them had the Ten Commandments. So they're there on the wall. So every Sunday, you're staring God's law in the face. Now, the law doesn't make anyone righteous. The law is a schoolmaster. The Bible says the law is a schoolmaster to take us by the hand and lead us to Christ. Uh, and, and so we are all disciples. Mathete is one who's learning. We're on a journey. But the Ten Commandments hold up God's perfect holiness. And we realize that we don't meet those standards. And we are really deserving of God's wrath. 
but in his kindness and mercy, he brought Jesus Christ. So that's why I love the, the Ten Commandments.